absolute zero and the Kelvin temperature scale. Just now, we learned that when we calibrate a thermometer, so we calibrate the thermometers. Let me give you the graph first, okay? When we calibrate this thermometer, then we say, okay, the ice point uh, arbitrary, okay, with no reasons, okay, not without a good reason. Uh, we just say, okay, the ice point is zero degrees Celsius. Arbitrary, we say the steam point is 100 degrees Celsius. But then later on, uh, scientists, they found that this is not a very, this is not a suitable scale. Even though this scale is widely used worldwide, the whole world are using this, but in science, especially when we want to do some calculation, this is not a good scale. Why? Because usually when we talk about, when we say zero, it means nothing, right? Zero, it means nothing. But this temperature, okay, this temperature, uh, the zero degree Celsius is still a quite a high temperature. And there's still a lot of thermal energy inside that object. If the object is zero degree Celsius, there are still a lot of uh, thermal energy. So then scientists, they do experiments. How they do experiments? Uh, for example, they, they do the experiments by measuring the volume of, a, of the gas with the temperature. And they found that Below zero degree Celsius, uh, it's zero degree Celsius. Below zero degree Celsius, okay. So, uh, the gas still exists, okay, and you can still decrease, okay. You can you can still decrease the temperature lower than zero degree Celsius, okay, and the volume keep on going down, okay. Up to certain levels, the gas turns to liquid. Then you cannot do experiment anymore because this is only for gas. Uh. When the gas turns to liquid. So they cannot achieve, uh, then you cannot continue the experiment anymore. But if we extend, okay, we extend this, uh, this line, uh, okay, until it touch the x-axis. When it touch this x-axis means that the volume becomes zero, eh? okay, the volume becomes zero. Here maybe the volume is uh, 200, uh, maybe this 200, okay, and then it's 100, okay, and here the volume is zero. Now, when the volume of the gas becomes zero, means that the particles of the gas does not move. When it moves, then it will uh, occupy some space. Eh? Okay, if it's uh, totally does not move, okay, all the particles stick together does not move, then the volume becomes zero. When the volume becomes zero, then we found that the temperature, the temperature here, is the negative two seventy three degrees Celsius. Actually, it's negative 273.16, but in SPM, we just assume that it's negative 273 degrees Celsius. Now, at this point, the air particle has totally no uh, thermal energy. And this is a real zero. This is not the real zero. This, we just, with no reason, we just, by arbitrary, we just tell this, say this is zero degrees Celsius, okay? But this one is a real zero. Why? Because at this point, there's totally no thermal energy. No thermal energy. And from here, we develop a new temperature scale. We call this zero Kelvin. Uh, now we develop the Kelvin scale, okay? Zero Kelvin, and we call this absolute zero, the real zero, the real zero, absolute zero. Uh, this is a temperature where uh, exactly there's no thermal energy inside, okay? And this is a real zero, and this this is zero Kelvin, and then. We still use the same uh, similar scale, okay? Uh, we still assume that one degree Celsius is equal equivalent to one Kelvin. So if the temperature increased by five degrees Celsius from here, okay, uh, in Kelvin also it increased by five Kelvin, eh? okay? So if we start from this point, okay, then we count, okay, there are how many Kelvin eh? from here to here, then you will find that is two seven three Kelvin. Eh? 273 Kelvin. Okay, because from here 0 to 2 negative 273 degrees Celsius, right? If you use the same scale, okay, then you will find that from here to here is 273 Kelvin. And this is a Kelvin temperature scale. This is the absolute zero, and this scale, let's start from here, is a Kelvin temperature scale. So what's the difference between a degree Celsius scale and Kelvin scale? The difference is only the starting point. 
of the zero, the starting point. Where do you start? Okay, for Celsius, we start from here. Okay, we start from here. Also, oh, this is zero. Lower than that is negative. But Kelvin, we start from here. Okay, and uh, that is the temperature where there's no thermal energy inside the molecule. So that is the difference between the Celsius scale and Kelvin scale. Okay, how to use Kelvin? Eh? We can convert temperature in degrees Celsius to Kelvin eh, by adding 273 to the temperature, for example. Okay, if the temperature is uh, 20 degrees Celsius. So 20 degrees Celsius, if Kelvin, eh, here is Kel 273 Kelvin, right? So you just need to plus another 20, uh, then it will be this. And this is 293 Kelvin. So how to convert Celsius to Kelvin? Plus 273. So 25 degrees Celsius plus 273 are ah, 298 Kelvin. 100 degrees Celsius plus 273, that's 39, uh, 373 Kelvin. So then how about 300 Kelvin? So can you please tell me 300 Kelvin is equivalent to how many degrees Celsius? 27, okay? So 300 minus 273 is equal to 27 degrees Celsius. Uh, 50 degrees Celsius equals to uh, how many Kelvin? 50 degrees Celsius equal to how many Kelvin? So it's 273 plus 50, right? 323, that's correct. 323, yeah? Okay, so that is how we convert degree to Kelvin and Kelvin to degree. When do we use Kelvin and when do we use degree Celsius? If you use Kelvin for any cases, any cases, okay, you use Kelvin, it won't be wrong. If you use Kelvin, eh, any instance, you won't be wrong. It will be, be always correct. But the problem is that uh, you need to convert, right? Because sometimes, normally, they will give you in degree Celsius. Eh? So if you want to use Kelvin, then you have to do some calculation, then only you get the temperature in Kelvin, okay? So then we need to know when, when can we use degree Celsius, okay? You can use degree Celsius when there's a temperature change. Temperature change. Like for example, the temperature change from uh, 10 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. If you, if you convert this to Kelvin, then it will be a 283 Kelvin to uh, 298, okay, so 288, two, okay, 288 Kelvin, right? Okay, if you change this to Kelvin, uh, this will be a uh, 283 Kelvin, this will be 288 Kelvin. Okay, now, if you want to see the difference, the temperature change, uh, okay, this one it increased by 5 degrees Celsius, right? Okay, this one it increased by 5 Kelvin, right? So you see, they are the same. Okay, for temperature change, uh, if you change to, whether you change to Kelvin or you do not change to Kelvin, it doesn't matter. Okay, it's still the same. 5 degrees Celsius is equal to 5 degrees Kelvin. Eh? Okay. So for temperature change, then you don't need to use Kelvin. Another one is for the calculations, uh, in, the, in the equations where both sides also has temperature. For example, P divided by temperature, uh, P1, T1, uh, P2, uh, oh no, this one cannot. Okay, this one you have to use... Uh, it doesn't involve multiplications, okay? Okay, it doesn't involve multiplication, but just involve a plus or minus of the temperature. Uh, then you don't need to change. Uh, if you're not sure, then you better change to Kelvin, eh? okay? Especially for the calculations of gas law. Okay, this one, eh? calculations of gas law. Uh, for gas law, then you must change your temperatures to Kelvin. 